Hello, you're listening to Summer Rush with Graydon and Ash on RDU 98.5. That was James Vincent McMorrow with Post Tropical there. The point of this documentary is for us to explain our understanding of the mechanics and operations of running a student college radio show, and that includes the technical and hosting aspects of the show, along with acknowledging the rising difficulties that transpire throughout. Our aims and goals for this entire internship which we'll explain about through this documentary is holding an interesting and listenable radio show, being somewhat successful, you know, holding interviews, yeah. getting people to text in, getting some audience participation. Uh, another one of our goals was to potentially continue on an internship after the show had actually finished. We did expect that it would be challenging and things would go wrong. And they did. And they did, yeah. But I mean, mistakes were always going to happen. For a large part of the college audience, college radio isn't just something that people listen to, it's something that people are. For that audience, it has become part of their identity. After we had accepted the offer of doing an internship, we started our training session. We've had two training sessions, basically, but... They kind of threw us in on the deep end yeah, yeah. today. We just went in there, and expecting a training session, and he was like, okay, cool, you know how to do this, you know how to do that, this is your playlist. Go. Okay, see you. <laughs> see you later. Your training, I had a certain expectation of you to pick up things pretty quickly because I knew that I wasn't going to be around and Gabriel didn't have a lot of time as well because you know we, we had so much going on with other projects at the station. Um, yeah, no, they were great. Um, easy to train, followed the direction really well. Um, from my perspective, you know, it's, it's really good to have um, sort of self-directed hosts who um, you know, once they've been shown the basics, they can just get into it, and um, I know they've done a great job. He, he did listen, and, and, and for the first few weeks, they did give us sort of feedback on how we were doing, yeah. what we could do. Little pointers here and there, like yeah. uh, often Gabe would come into the studio um, before each show. They came in and said, okay, you need to be aware of the time slots, you need to make sure that we have ads going in on the hour. Like on the half hour? Just remembering to, to announce, back announce songs and forward announce and... Also Gabriel um, told us that our levels were too high. Like everything was playing way too loudly and it was getting really disordered. So that was another issue that we had to watch out for. College Radio offers students the chance to learn broadcasting techniques, make mistakes, work in and learn from a professional environment, and most importantly learn from experience. It serves as the perfect training ground for students looking to move into the industry. Basically, we had our microphones turned on and off. I won't do that right now because yeah. we're on air. Um, we have our music. We don't touch that, do we? We don't turn it off. We don't turn it, no, we only we don't turn turn it on and off. We don't put it up and down unless we're doing like a voice break. We switch it down so we can actually talk. DJ, not sure what that one's for. I uh, want to plug in the laptop, play music from our laptop. We have a um, CD which we haven't actually used and we have for the phone which we have over there. Then um, we have these which you turn up and down, turn the music up and down on the speakers or turn the music up and down in your microphone so you can hear yourself talk and things. So an average show for us consisted of a few different things. I mean we had sort of a, a plan going. We have sort of like a basic guideline we'll do you know our uh, obscure fact of the day, our review, good guide and app, yep. and then we'll do the weather and wrap up. They've not been afraid to kind of try new things and talk about different things. We've not given them any clear direction, but they've kind of steered the show in their own, um, and I really like that. I like that about the show, and it's not just student based, they cover lots of things that are happening, which is good. The lack of rules or restrictions placed on college radio allows stations to be more open with their programming choices. Mostly nowadays we've settled into a proper structure. That was Kiwi Boy David Dallas with Payoff. And now we've got an obscure fact of the day for okay. you. Okay, here's, here's an interesting fact for you. Quite interesting, I always... Of course you find this interesting, Graydon. Yes, wait. What's it? Okay, um, <clears throat> here it is. Over the past decade, micro-broadcasters have shown perseverance, creativity and ingenuity of local communities across the country. A contrast to popular radio sessions like The Edge is that it's, it's easy to tell how rigidly structured our show is. Mm. I mean, of course we are beginners, so we kind of have to have a structure of some sort to guide us through. But stations like The Edge, I haven't heard a specific structure. They'll have um, weather updates, news updates at specific times and things like that. 
but they'll have stories every now and then, you know, the other day I heard one of them had an awkward encounter with their ex type thing and then they were all laughing about it and talking about it, they had like a discussion and you're listening on the radio, it's kind of like you laugh along and things like that, then they were like, oh, um, you know, why, why don't we get people to text in? T tell us your awkward ex encounter stories. They'll do that a lot. You know, one of them will have a funny story or they'll randomly be like, oh, you know, did you hear Miley Cyrus did this or that? Then they'll talk about it and... It's very loose. It, yeah, it's it very feels loose. loose. It, but it's good. Yeah. Like, it's a good loose. Like, ours is structured and it's very good. Theirs is not structured, still very good. Yeah. When we do our obscure fact, we do say, you know, people text in with your obscure facts and then me and Graydon will talk about it. We'll talk about our... Mm effect and we sort of laugh about it and things like that so we do have the same thing going but ours is like a, we have a specific yeah. structure like yeah. we have this is obscure fact of the day and this is what it is yeah. and it's usually always about quarter past twelve a station like the edge would have a timeline that they'd be okay this will happen at this time we'll have band to here band to here band to here but they wouldn't actually be like okay we'll have obscure fact and then we'll have we'll talk about specifically this it'd just be like Oh, I've got this funny story, let's talk about it, have a laugh, and it, it, it is quite natural, like the banter yeah. and everything. We're good at bantering. We're very good at bantering. That's yes. something that's... they did compliment us on yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they're all mud, but that's to keep them dry, but it's not dirty. It's not like they're <laughs> Mud's in not own... dirty. <laughs> it's not like they're rolling in their own, you know... Crap. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Why does interrupt me? I know, I know, I can't help it. I like the sound of my Control own voice. Control yourself. Oh, Don't. golly. Don't. Mm. Don't do that. Voice. Don't do that. Talking it's into my funny. voice box. Graydon and Ashley work together really well, and uh, which, you know, as far as you know, running a show, it always sort of helps to have a co-host to bounce off, and I think they've done really well um, working together in that respect. Apparently interns in the past have just gone into incessant giggling fits. Yeah. Whereas we laugh and then move on. Apparently, some of the old interns took three or four weeks until they did a voice break. Yeah, so... And we did a voice break within ten minutes on the job. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, that, that's what The Edge does as well. And they, they'll laugh, and it actually it actually makes you laugh when you're listening. It's a community, really. And so we, we have been working on ours, and, and we have got a lot better. I mean, we don't have the big sort of community of listeners that The Edge has. Obviously, The Edge has a lot of listeners, but we, we still manage to to work on it quite well and create that. We've tried to really build the community feeling. We have one show, it was only really one show that we did it. We constantly mentioned, text in, text in, text in. We got a text in! Somebody yeah! finally texted in! Someone texted us with an obscure fact. We're currently playing some music um, off my laptop because we've got text -ins. We had requests, people texted in and requested uh, things from us and we had people text in with facts. Yeah. And I mean, one of them was my boyfriend. Yeah, but so, still. So, but still, like, oh my gosh, uh, we got like four texts within like five minutes. Yeah, yeah. It's... And it makes us so happy. So this is just another thing to add to the list oh, of mistakes for today. I'm going to write that down. There were quite a few difficulties that we came across and had to overcome. And I mean, we did expect it. We did expect difficulties. We tried our best to overcome them, and I think we did a relatively good job, actually. Yeah. When we started at RDU, they were like, we're bringing out this app on the 1st of February, and this was in December. And they were like, okay, we're, we're, you can email us and give us your serial codes and things like that. We'll give you a version of the app so you can test it. We're like the beta testers. They had the alpha ones to test it originally. Um, and we were gonna test it, and basically they told us try to break it. The RDU app you can be very So, so that they could see anything that was was wrong with it and fix it before it came out to the public. Um, and we, of course, emailed all our stuff. I was quite late in doing it. Admittedly, like I didn't send mine in until quite quite a way in. This wasn't our fault though. We emailed a man, but. Didn't get a reply for weeks and weeks on end. In fact, I did have Mike keep on coming up to us being like, okay, don't worry, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming, it's coming. The only thing we could do to overcome this sort of obstacle was to constantly ask him, which we did. Yeah. Like, whenever we'd see him, we'd be like, hey, when are we going to get the app? And I'll admit that also I didn't actually properly get a chance to download the app when I got it just because the, I had a few difficulties on my laptop. And I mean in the end we didn't actually get to fully test it but I mean we, we were promoting it the whole time yeah. and talking about it.
You're talking. Welcome. Hello. Oh. <laughs> no, I was waiting for you to talk, and then I started talking, and you started talking. Okay, Just so, welcome. No, no, stop. <laughs> if you want me to talk, I will talk. Okay, okay. Okay, so welcome back to Summer Rush with Grady and Ash on RDU 98.5. Stop laughing at me, it's distracting. <laughs> the improvements that can be made are really just things that will happen naturally with time, with more time spent on air. In terms of difficulties, we basically done all we can to just get get forward, push past them and either acknowledge them if they're really bad or try and not acknowledge them on the radio especially because that was one thing that Rachel did tell us at the very beginning, don't acknowledge yeah, your don't mistakes. Just, just push past it, pretend everything's okay because most of the time listeners won't realise that we've made a mistake, they just not really think too much into it. Yeah, yeah headphone list today. One pair of headphones. After only having one pair for a few weeks, you begin to realise how important like, they are. Mm, like essential. Headphones. Everyone, Gabriel, Rachel, and Mike all aren't here because they're all gone, they're all gone on holiday, and there's only one pair of headphones <laughs> that actually had the right jack. Currently in the studio with still one pair of headphones. Of course, we only have one pair of headphones. Certain pieces of equipment, even though they just seem so unimportant. Yeah. We can kind of um, kept talking over top of the ad break. That was pretty bad. Of course, we only have one pair of headphones, so I didn't even know. Yeah. So, so I'm just talking away, and Greg's like, like, and we're talking over some ads. Oh, God. <laughs> and then um, we had another difficulty where I forgot to turn off Graydon's headphone. Because sometimes yeah. if you do both, if you do them both at the same time, it'll only turn on or off one of them. Yeah, which is a And um, Graydon's was still on, so we went to the song, and Graydon kept talking. Yeah, I was just and talking And I had about... the headphones on, I was like, that's weird, I can hear Graydon's voice in my headphones. <laughs> that's very weird, and Graydon's like, oh, I still seem to be on. And I was like, cut off. Radio is a relatively inexpensive technology for producers and consumers alike. Equally important, radio's ease of use, adaptability, and portability make it an ideal medium. So, first day, I have remembered to bring a headphone jack. I think this is the nature of all shows that have a double or a co-hosting um, dynamic because it's very easy to get into a sort of dialogue or things that don't necessarily come across well on air that would in a normal conversation. So laughing or having a private joke or kind of muttering to one another. I think in the early stages there was quite a lot of that. Only because Greg and Ashley are very close friends. So they already have a really good banter going on. And I think sometimes you have to be, while it's good to be natural, you have to be a little bit false as co-hosts and really give each other the space and time to talk clearly. Especially with doing interviews. We had a lot of troubles with doing interviews with one pair of headphones. So the song we're playing at the moment is French for Rabbits. It's nice. We interviewed her. Yeah. Her name's Brooke and it's their band is French for Rabbits. Yeah. And we were supposed to interview her. Unfortunately there were a lot of technical difficulties going on that day. So I mean we missed the first hour of our show yeah. so we only had the half hour show. It wasn't actually our fault. No, no, we did not do the technical difficulties. It was to do with the app, you know, it's four days till the launch of the app, so they did need to sort it. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, we had to all sit in the sun, which was nice. I mean, we yeah. chatted and yeah, everything, and so it wasn't too bad. Bit, so. um, but we were, it was a bit iffy whether yeah. we would actually get to interview her. Like, we had 10 minutes, we interviewed her in about seven or eight minutes, yeah. I guess. Yeah, played, played um, a track, played which a cut track. out halfway through. Uh, which was because, her track. Yeah. Cut so, out halfway through. Uh, we had to do a voice break, we did our obscure fact, and then we played it again. At least we did get to do the interview. Yeah, that's that's the main thing. Yeah. Having the hour to talk to her beforehand made us a lot more comfortable, and yeah. it was a lot easier just to I mean, if, uh, if we'd had to have a chat. Just you know, straight off, talk to her for two minutes and then do an interview, it would have been a lot harder. Yeah. Because she did actually tell us about her tour and yeah. she told us about how she got started and about her band and everything. Yeah. So it was good knowing some background straight from her. Because yeah. we did look them up. I feel like, in comparison to a lot of interviews that are run, um, like I remember looking at an interview with Mike on Morning Glory with David Dallas. And it was just over the phone. Probably, I would say he beforehand um, talked to, to David Dallas a wee bit, just about what sort of questions to ask and that. 
but um, it almost sound, it, did, it sounded like he didn't actually have a huge knowledge of David himself. Well, it seemed like Mike didn't actually realise that David was discovered by P Money. I think our interview. I I feel like it, it was almost a slight disadvantage as well, though, with um, Heck talking to her for an hour, because we we learned all this stuff about her, but then we kind of forgot to apply it to some of the questions that we were asking because we already knew the answers. Yeah. I was sort of rushing around in my head trying to think of things to ask. I think it was much easier having both of us in here yeah. because then when you didn't say something, I could say something. When yeah. I didn't say something, Graydon would say something. Yeah. And it was just a lot easier to bounce off each other. And a lot of issues happened with music and all that sort of stuff, mm -hmm. but we just kept pushing forward, kept moving on. So our understanding of the radio industry has really broadened because of this internship. I, um, we've learnt how to man the ropes, obviously behind all the technical stuff, that, that's down pat, but it also sort of showed us like how college radio really differs from major radio stations. It's more aimed at a specific audience. It brings independent music to independent listeners. Well, if you listen to The Edge or Moor FM, they have, you know, quite a wide audience. You know, have the popular music and things like that. Whereas this is aimed at people who listen to alternative radio, people who study musically. It offered fear you wouldn't hear anywhere else on Christchurch Radio. Alternative music. I mean, they have a lot of stuff, um, like specific places, specific um, information, things like that, specific events. Um, for that particular crowd. Yeah, and it's all very, very Christchurch based. Yes, like, very uh, local. Mm. They, they have a very localised, and, and I mean a lot of their music is Kiwi music, so they, they do a lot of, it's more of like a community, a closer community. And there's all the advertisements are often for local places like the Dark Room or Pallet Pavilion, uh, Beat Street, so it's a real local feeling. Yeah, whereas like, what you said, like on the edge, the discussion. It's, it's more Americanised. Yeah. A, a lot of them, you know, they'll talk about the celebrities, um, celebrity culture. And the New Zealand things about it are very national. Mm. Uh, so the news is covering the whole country. They talk about the big upcoming gigs, like big concerts coming to different cities. Yeah. Whereas with us, we've just got a gig guide that we do each week, which just sort of goes through each of the venues. Yeah. With the, the local bands happening. One thing I think we have learnt as well um, about the radio industry is that it's very, very structured. Often when you listen in, just as a you know casual listener, it's very bantery and easy, and it just flows really, really well. Behind the scenes, it's very organised. You'll yeah. you'll plan what you're going to say. Mm. Sometimes even go through the banter. We first started it was like we 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 and did like plans of the shows yeah. and like this is what we're going to do. We typed it all up and yeah. stuff. And now it's just like we come in here. We look up the we stuff. We look up well, a couple of things. Then we're like, sweet ass, it's just bullshit. It. Yeah. <laughs> we haven't even watched the past three movies we've reviewed, and we've made up. We've done done it pretty well. It is organised, it is structured, but it's easier to sort of make it flow. Yeah, like a lot of the structuring things, that, more on the technical side these days, is just bringing each other in, you know, getting the music transferring nicely. Adhering to the hour markers, that's something that is very, very important, which all radio stations have to manage, is sticking to a schedule, like, uh, especially with ad, ad breaks because ads are like the major sponsors of radio stations, they need to be played. For the first few weeks we would just start the show and there would be no little to no ads until 1.30 because we were not adhering to the hour markers at all. It's important to stick to those structures, otherwise your show sort of just goes out the window. Yeah. And there were some transferable skills as well from obviously the classes that we've been taking through university, such as like um, our research skills. Um, t even with the interview, we um, looked up a little bit about um, Brooks Band, French for Rabbits. Yeah. Looked up in music, looked up their history, where they're from, you know, what they've done. Even though we were talking to her for an hour, we still had a little bit of knowledge mm. about her. And I mean, we did get that from also starting the internship, and they were like, uh, you know, look up some of the songs, look up mm. some of the artists, so you can actually say, hey, this is this song coming from this artist and they are based in wherever or they've done this or it's off yeah. this album. So we have actually learned to look a bit more into 
talking about. And artists. it really helps you sound like you know what you're talking about. Even though we have no idea. Yeah. Some form of centralization were needed to overcome the limitations of presenters whose knowledge of music was just developing. Yes. Time management is a very, very, very good skill that you pick up throughout university that works in the real world. Like our time management did sort of backfire on us a little bit because mm. we said we review films each week. Um, yeah, and then sort of our schedules got busier and we didn't get around to seeing films, so we kind of had to look them up in the studio. More researching skills, yep. actually, that <laughs> developed our other skills. Another transferable skill was our use of communication skills. So this is basically just being able to keep up to date with Rachel and Gabe and all that and responding to emails, especially at the beginning um, of the internship. There was a lot of um, issues with actually hearing from Rachel to begin with, mm. you know, at the very, very beginning. Um, so that was already a test to ourselves mm. and we basically learnt from that um, that we just need to keep pushing people and I'll admit that we were a bit slack with that. I've got to admit, one thing that both Ashley and I are really learning how to do is just talk. I think we're really getting the hang of talking coherently, with coherent ideas, at the spur of a moment, you know? Like, especially with these film reviews that we're doing. We just seem to just... off the bat. A lot of expectations of what yeah. we would do. And I remember at the start of it, we were like, "Oh, we can do this and do that," and then eventually mm. we're just like, "We'll just do a fact. We'll just do a, uh, our review and yeah. then the basic stuff." Yeah, because it's all we had time for. And while the show was somewhat successful, like we did get some textings and call-ins, interviews, and that sort of thing, it, it definitely was not on the level of other bigger shows, like even Morning Glory on RDU. Apparently, they get like a hundred to two hundred texts. We thought we'd be relatively on top of it the whole time. We did do quite a good job because I mean, seeing two movies a week is quite. When, a lot when of you've time. got when you've got a very busy schedule, yeah. like it is quite a bit of time. Both of them sounded pretty keen to actually keep us on for um, future shows after this internship. I like that there's a girl, boy, man, woman. I should say dynamic. There's nothing else like that on the station. And it's great that you're young, you know, we need young people to keep the station evolving. That's how RDU has managed to, you know, be this way. We're always um, looking to bring, you know, new, new and upcoming hosts into the station. So, um, yeah, I'll definitely consider Graydon and Ashley for a show. This internship has impacted our lives. Like, from it we have learned really valuable skills and like how to transfer our knowledge from university to the real world. Through this internship, we have met a great bunch of people, like Rachel, Gabe, Mike. It made us feel more like a part of the RDU community. Yeah. It is good, you know, when you go to university, you study, you find out about everything that you want to study, but it's so much better to have the practical yeah. skills, you know, yeah. to actually go and experience what you might actually be doing later in life you know yeah. we might end up on the radio or end up in broadcasting or whatever yeah, and it's actually a great way to actually another tester for uh, uni but it, it feels more directed and focused and mm. it definitely feels like a direction that I think both of us want to take being viable for our future careers as well like the, this internship has given us well, it sort of opened us up to the real world of it. Yeah. So. And I mean, given us very valuable experience, yeah, yeah. which not a lot of people would get to do. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's something we can put down on the CV, yeah. but it, yeah, it's something we can definitely take away and learn from and mm -hmm. continue to learn from well into the future. So tune in next week. And thank you again for listening to us. Yes. You've been listening to uh, The Summer Rush with Graydon and Ash on RDU 98.5.